Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. Welcome to Multicultural TV Talk, a Media Village podcast where we bring you interviews with talent and creatives from across entertainment, discovering their stories and how they are changing the face of stardom across media. As always, I am your host, Juan Ayala. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, let's get to talking. Joining us today to talk all about the new film, Chang Can Dunk, coming to Disney Plus on March 10th is the star of the film, Bloom Lee, and the film's director and writer, Ji Yi Shao. Bloom, Ji, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Hey. Great to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. So firstly, congrats to both of you on, on such a great film. I mean, it felt like, you know, the classic teen movies that I grew up watching, you know, from the 90s and the 80s. Um, so, I mean, hats off to both of you. And I just love the fresh perspective um, that this particular film brought. So, yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. First. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that, man. Glad you felt that yeah. way. I mean, uh, you know, I grew up on 90s sports coming of age films so mm. glad you felt that way about the film yeah that was actually my first question is if there's any um particular sort of classic film or filmmaker that inspired you while you were writing the script um i think that like you know one of my favorite films growing up was mighty ducks mm. and i think that like mighty ducks little giant little giants um karate kid that whole era of like john hughes coming of age high school you know, full of heart, but also comedy, also interesting characters. Uh, I wanted to make a film that harkens back to that era for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so the way we shot it, the sort of interplay between all the characters, how it feels like an ensemble cast, but has a strong singular lead. I think those are all, you know, inspired by films of that time period. So Bloom, you were part of a nationwide casting search. I remember seeing, uh, you know, all the Instagram posts and all my actor friends posting about it to try and, you know, spread awareness for the role. And uh, I'm curious, what was your audition process like? And um, once you found out you booked the role, who was the first person that you called? Um, yeah, so I think I submitted for the, I saw the open call and then I only, I submitted like maybe two to three weeks after I initially saw it. Cause I don't know, I just didn't, it didn't register for me to like audition for it. And then one of my friends mm -hmm. messaged me with the call like a couple of weeks later. And she's like, I think you should audition for this. And at that point I was like, oh, like if the call's been out for that long already, it's probably too late. Um, but if somebody else thinks that I should, uh, I could be a good fit for this role, I'll send in a tape. So I sent in a tape. And then within two weeks, I got a call back for that same week. And then the, one week later, I was in Connecticut in pre-production for it. So it was really, really quick um in terms of like the notice of the callback and when i was actually flown out to connecticut to start uh training um and the first person i called i didn't call anybody for like a day um and the, the first person i called were my parents um when i actually did call them um yeah um i i love that you guys filmed the connecticut i was born and raised in connecticut so it's nice. so awesome to see productions go out there so um yeah lots of connections between me and this movie it's awesome <laughs> And uh, G, when you were writing the film, um, did you always plan for it to be sort of like semi-autobiographical, given your involvement with basketball and the marching band and all of that? Or did it evolve into a more personal story as you developed it? I feel like every filmmaker's films are semi-autobiographical in some kind of way. I mean, this one, obviously, uh, a lot more direct because I was an Asian American kid that grew up in, you know, an East Coast suburb. Uh, and I love basketball and I was in the marching band and you know, uh, I struggle to fit in sometimes. Um, uh, you know, Chang is both very much me, but also uh, his own character, you know. Um, and so what I tried to do was I tried to uh, inject truths from my own experience, from the experiences of people around me into this story and make sure that uh, whatever Chang was doing, because, you know, I didn't have a huge bet face off, didn't go viral when I was in high school. Um, but but in those moments, how Chang reacts to all the things that are happening to him, I did draw very much from my own life. In Bloom, I don't know how long it's been since you were in high school, but how similar would you say that high school Bloom was to Chang? Um, man, I, <laughs> again, I don't like saying this, but I, I think I had a lot more confidence than Chang or fake confidence than Chang in high school. <laughs> um, I think I, you know, I, I think my insecurities with like friendships and stuff were more in kind of like elementary school and middle school. And I think by the time in high school, I kind of like was better able to like interact with people and didn't feel so um, misseen a lot of times. But I think one of the first things written on the script is 
this film is like based on countless true stories. And I think when I read that, I was like, oh yeah, like even though my high school experience isn't related, um, isn't on the paper related to Chang, I think the emotional uh, core of who Chang is was very relatable to me um, and what he was going through. And I think it, it transcends high school at that point. You know what I mean? Like I read the script and I felt that I understood, I understood his struggles even till this day. Yeah, it's, I think it's a very relatable sort of story, like being like that, you know, the classic yeah. underdog story um, and just that sort of thing. It's um, incredibly relatable for people, whether they're in sports or in the arts or whatever it is, if there's just something they're so passionate or obsessed about and they just can't get to where they want to be. Um, I, I love that aspect uh, about the film. So again, c- congrats on on such a great just overall project. Um, and, and G, so you've directed a number of uh, shorts and music videos in your career, but this is your feature film debut. So I'm curious, what would you say was the biggest challenge in taking on the endeavor of it being a much larger scale production? I, I do think that, uh, I think that like, you know, um, the story is about feeling invisible. Uh, but what happens when the spotlight is turned on you? You know, we we struggle so hard for opportunities. But what happens when you do get that opportunity? It can be uh, it can be very, very scary. And for me, you know, um, I've wanted to direct a feature film for so long. But for suddenly all the pieces to come together, I had to really face sort of my own self-doubt. Uh, you know, imposter syndrome, you know, is this story interesting enough? Are people going to like this? Um, in a lot of ways, I was going through what Chang goes through in this film in trying to dunk, you know, um, you know, my my dunk is was to make a feature film. Mm. And so in a weird meta way, a lot of times when I was like, feeling like, man, this isn't going so well, because we had a lot of challenges shooting in Connecticut, shooting during COVID, bad weather, you know, all sorts of challenges. Um, I would refer, I would, I would actually go back uh, after shooting and I would read the script and I would just remember that, you know, I wrote this the script is fire. Um, and Chang is a Chang is what would Chang do <laughs> in this situation? <laughs> he certainly wouldn't quit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he's got to throw that ball down. He's got to get the girl. He's got to, he's got to show Matt who's boss, et cetera, et cetera. Otherwise he's going to lose that. Uh, Charizard card, you know. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to lose that. I mean, uh, it's so funny because in the time that the film has been finished, I think that that card is worth way more. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> the, I saw that in one of the comments on like YouTube. I think they're like that. That card is worth like twenty thousand dollars. Now that's a bad bet. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and uh, Bloom. So as an actor, I feel that there is always something to be learned in any role, no matter the size. So, what is the biggest lesson that you learned while working on the film? Oh, true. So many lessons. Uh, but I think, I think what Chang, I have more friends in high school, but what Chang has is resilience, like incredible, incredible resilience. And I think playing this part also in a very like meta way, um, I got to explore that aspect of my personality. And I think the lesson I think I took away is just that like, I, the potential in myself is a lot I have much more potential and resilience within me that I can tap into than I initially thought when I started, you know, and I only found out, I only found that out because I continued to try to push um, throughout the entire shooting process. And um, this is a question for both of you. So uh, what would you say that you want audiences to take away from the film after they see it? You go first, my man. I I honestly, I want them to feel, I want them to feel inspired and I want them to feel seen. Um, That's, that's basically what I think would, I think, you know, I think if you feel inspired after watching this movie, like I couldn't ask for any more out of this movie. You know what I mean? Um, Because like that, that spark of inspiration or hope or like being seen is like so rare um, to, to have. And if the film could do that, even for a single person, um, I would be satisfied. I think for me, uh, the journey is so much more valuable than the destination necessarily. And I think that um, 
if you have big dreams, if you're trying to do something great and difficult and you have a lot of doubt, I, I want people to watch this film and realize that you're not alone and that, uh, that a lot of people are going through this and that you're brave to just try. And in the trying, you can really transform not just who you are, but your relationships with other people and how you perceive the world. And ultimately, that's everything. You know, we love to ask this question on our show. So what is uh, the earliest memory you have of a TV show or a performance that made you feel seen and represented for the first time? Um, I think I was like maybe like four or something. I was watching like the like a 1980 something uh, Chinese DVD of like the Monkey King. Um, I don't know if you know, but it's like this this like show about the the mythology of the Monkey King, and it's like this dude dressed up as like the monkey king and like he goes on adventures with his friends and stuff and i think that was like the first time i was like because he was like he was kind of a he was kind of a rascally character and for me i uh, i felt like at that point in my life at that age i was like i didn't really have a lot of fun and i think seeing that character i was like oh wow like i can live more fun ng what about you um that's a great question what was the first time? I feel like there was an earlier one, but the one I remember is probably, uh, is actually Key, Key Kwan from uh, Goonies. Mm -hmm. um, and I love his character in, in Goonies because he's just so useful. <laughs> 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 he's the most useful one, God damn it. Um, yeah. Without him, what would they do? None of, them other, none of the other, other kids have skills. You know what I mean? Um, and I thought that was dope. And I was like, you know, if you have skills, you'll always be useful. <laughs> and uh if you had this sort of back to the future moment we're going to take time paradoxes and all of that out of the equation but if you're able to go back and you ran into your 13 year old self and you could give yourself one piece of advice what would you say what would i say um dang you want to go first i i would just tell him to to trust himself and like you know um what he what he believes or what he thinks is valuable and to to follow that as much as he can uh if i'm being totally honest, well I, that's what i was going to say <laughs> but i'll throw <laughs> i'll throw something else different um i would tell him to uh <laughs> i would tell him to train how to dunk i would i would tell him to to work, start working out earlier <laughs> that's what i would actually tell him Awesome. Well, gentlemen, again, congrats on such a fantastic movie. I cannot wait for audiences to see it. And thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Folks, be sure to give us a follow at Media Village Com on Instagram and head over to MediaVillage.com for all of our reviews, interviews, podcasts, and more. And don't miss Chain Can Dunk streaming exclusively on Disney Plus March 10th. I'm Juan Yala. This is Multicultural TV Talk. Thanks for joining us.